Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem number one from the leak code contest number 138 entitled height checker. The problem states students are asked to stand in non-decreasing order of heights for an annual photo. Return the minimum number of students not standing in the right positions. This is the number of students that must move in order for all students to be standing in the non-decreasing order of height. And the constraints for this problem are going to be pretty small. Uh, the length of our list heights is going to be between 1 and 100. And the heights themselves will be between the values 1 and 100 as well, whatever that means. So let's take a look at the example that Leeco provided us with. So here we have a list of seven students, six students, and uh, their heights. And basically, it's asking us um, how many of them are not in the correct order if it were to be sorted. And the explanation here is that the students 4, 3, and 1 are not standing in the right positions. So this question is pretty straightforward. It's just going to boil down to basically uh, keeping a copy of our original array, then sorting uh, the copy of it, and then checking uh, each index to see if the value at each of those indices is the same as it was originally. So this will look as follows. Here is our original list of heights. And then we sort it, and then we just check, uh, are the values equal to each other at each index? And three of them are not, which are uh, the three students that are in the wrong position, which is why the answer here is three. So pretty straightforward problem. Uh, this problem is going to mostly focus on uh, the different ways to solve it in different languages. So we're going to start off with Python. So here is our functional solution in Python. This basically just combines the sum method with a generator expression and uh, the zip method to basically pair uh, the original values in our list h with uh, the new values in our sorted list uh, that we have here. And this is basically going to give us two elements at a time, a and b, one from h and one from our sorted list. And then we can basically just check, is a not equal to b? And anytime this returns true, it'll basically increment one. Uh, and this will be gobbled up by our sum method, which will give us the total number of students that are not in their correct positions. So it's a pretty nifty function that we have here, zip. We've seen it before in other solutions. And uh, it's useful, definitely useful in this case. Taking a look at our C++ solution, here we don't have zip, but as I've mentioned in previous videos, when you want to use zip, you should uh, be reaching for the algorithm inner product. So uh, the first thing we're going to do here is make a copy of our vector v, uh, which we're going to call t. Then we're going to sort that vector t, and then we're going to make a call to inner product, which is basically going to zip an element from h and from t uh, one at a time. And then we're going to have basically a transformation lambda and a reduction lambda. So the last lambda here, or these are not lambdas, these are function objects, um, it's basically going to return us a true or false. So it's going to return us true when those two elements that we've taken from h and t one at a time uh, are not equal to each other. And then uh, our reduction uh, function object or binary operation is going to be plus. So basically, we're going to convert these uh, two vectors into a vector of Booleans. And then we're just going to sum up the Booleans. And implicitly, a true is converted to a 1, and a uh, false is, con is converted to a 0. So it's a little bit esoteric what this function is doing here, but it does the trick. And for the first time ever, we are covering a C++20 ranges solution. So in C++20, we will be getting a version of the current ranges v3 library. So potentially not all of the uh, algorithms that you see here will come with C++20, but uh, the idea of them will definitely be there. Um, so here, we're doing the same thing that we did in our original C++ solution. We are making a copy of v and then sorting it. But here, we can do this all in one line with making calls to ranges copy and then our range action sort. And then um, less esoterically, we can actually make a call to a, a method called zip with. So zip with is basically zip, um, but it takes a binary operation with it and automatically applies it. So it's zipping together v and t similarly to as we did before, uh, but then it's automatically applying uh, the minus binary, binary operation. And then after we do that, we're basically going through and counting uh, each of the elements that have a uh, difference that was calculated with the minus binary operation not equal to zero. And this will be equal to the number of students that are in the wrong position. And if this doesn't make as much sense as the previous C++ solution, uh, this is basically the same thing. And it's, a, it's more similar to what we were previously doing. So 
Um, here we are, instead of using the minus binary operation, we're using the not equal to, which will return true anytime the two elements taken from v and t respectively don't equal each other. And then we can once again just sum these up, which will implicitly convert the trues into ones. And if you're wondering where is these hs sum and hs count if um, algorithms coming from, we can basically just wrap these in uh, make pipeable in order to use them sort of with the ranges syntax where you go pipe pipe and then just pass the methods or algorithms that you want to use. So um, currently the C20 slash ranges v3 don't give us the um, range based algorithms in the pipeable version, but it's easy enough to just put these together ourselves. And last but not least, our Haskell solution, which in my opinion is the best of all. Um, it does basically the exact same thing that the C20 ranges solution is doing. It's using a zip width, applying a binary operation. Here, this is the equivalent of our minus. And uh, you're able to do uh, pass the x's, which is our list of heights, um, and the sorted list of heights all at once. And then we just basically filter the values that aren't equal to zero, and then just take the length. So this is basically our count if that we can just piece together ourselves. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for this problem is going to be n log n due to the fact that each of our solutions require sorting the elements of our original list. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.